During the interview, Kazumoto-san asked about what was wrong with Bitcoin. At some point, Roger Bar pointed out. Let us listen to this part. At one point, you were sounding a lot loudly that Bitcoin was on the wrong track. Do you remember? So it depends on how you define Bitcoin. If you uh, define it as BTC, I think it is on the wrong track. It's become a speculative asset where speculators are speculating on the future speculation of other speculators. Whereas if we heard you know, from other people on the previous panel, payments, 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 it's the underlying utility that makes these cryptocurrencies so useful. And so we've seen that like BTC, it used to have 95% market share in terms of market cap. Now I haven't checked recently, but it's well under 50%. It's maybe 30 something percent. And so that shows like, you know, I'm old enough to remember MySpace. MySpace was the premier go-to social media network. Now nobody uses it. I don't even know if there's a website up anymore. It's because the user experience became bad. And before MySpace, there was Friendster. When the user experience on Friendster became bad, people migrated away from that. And right now, Bitcoin, BTC, has the brand recognition that everybody knows around the world. And on some days, it has the most liquidity. Other days, maybe Ethereum has more liquidity. But that just shows, like, it's fallen from this you know, 95% market share to less than 50% market share. That's on the wrong track. And so I think the future is on all these EVM chains and the other things that are happening. Or even if you look at what brought Bitcoin to the world in the first place, it was these dark net markets that were using it for illegal commerce. They were all using Bitcoin originally. Today, almost none of them use Bitcoin. They're using things like Monero or, or other coins. And that's a sign that Bitcoin isn't as useful for payments as it used to be. And so whether it's Monero or Bitcoin Cash or, or take or Ethereum or whatever else, there's a huge giant wide world out of there. And people having more choices is a good thing. Just like we can choose to use the Euro, the Yen, the Dollar, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero, take your pick. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, of course, people love me talking about that one as well. But more choices are a good thing. And uh, if people want to speculate on BTC, have at it. If you want to speculate on something else, more power to you. But so in the talk, uh, Roger Bar commented that other coins, they're serving the purpose originally Bitcoin was designed to do, the payments. So let us continue listening. But uh, that's what's the beauty of all these decentralized individual networks. We have a decentralized set of currencies and you can choose which one of those crypto currencies or protocols you want to use and that's a good thing uh, in hindsight was there anything you could have done what you should have done to put bitcoin back on the track the right track so if i could put on my conspiracy theory hat today and I, I don't have hard evidence of this but it makes the most sense if you look at it who has the most to lose from bitcoin becoming the currency of the entire world well it's the governments around the world that are issuing their own currencies and particularly the u.s dollar and if you look at what happened with Bitcoin, the project was very clearly hijacked from supposed to be peer-to-peer -peer cash for the entire world in which people would use it for payments to now it's just a speculative asset and people get mocked if they talk about wanting to do payments with it. And so like, if you look at it, it's not even a secret. There was a man named Peter Todd, uh, his email account got hacked and it was leaked that he was literally paid money by someone who openly claims to work for a US intelligence agency to put out you can call it propaganda or information depending on your point of view, but basically saying that Bitcoin shouldn't be used for, uh, for payments and that you should, and he basically he went out there and lobbied to break Bitcoin's usefulness in payments. And today, Bitcoin's not very useful for payments unless you're using a custodian. But if you're using a custodian, you've kind of missed the entire point of these decentralized censorship resistant networks. The entire point, people talk about decentralization, decentralization, this and that. Decentralization is the tool and it's the tool that we use to achieve censorship resistance. And when I talk about censorship, I'm talking about censorship from governments. That's what makes cryptocurrency so amazing is that you can send and receive any amount of money with anyone anywhere on the planet. And it's impossible for anybody, including governments, to stop you. That's what brought this entire ecosystem into existence is the censorship resistance. And the decentralization is just the tool to achieve that. It's not the goal in and of itself.